Hi, my name is Mark Barchi. I'm the Sports Information Director at Wakaiva High School. And in this presentation, I will be going through the requirements and the steps to take scoreboard data coming out of your scoreboard controller and using it on a live video display inside the arena or the field, and also optionally using that same data on a live webcast that goes out to the internet. We've been doing this at Wakaiva for a couple of years now, and each year we add a few more bells and whistles to it and get the presentation a little bit more polished, uh, and we hope to continue to do that. It actually is a lot easier and less expensive than you may think it is, and the great advantage of doing this is that while um, purchasing additional hardware from your scoreboard vendor could be prohibitively expensive, especially on a school budget. Um, the techniques that I'm going to show here can be accomplished using just a single sportscast device uh, and then any video display you have. It can be any big screen TV that you may already have mounted in your arena or in your concessions area. If you have one of those uh, scoreboard or score tables that has the video display built into the front of it, it will connect to that pretty much anything that you can send video to via an ordinary HDMI my output just like you would send a Blu-ray output or a, a cable box output. You can send this kind of scoreboard data and create a, a really slick presentation that frankly looks better in many ways than that expensive equipment that you can order from a scoreboard vendor and put on the wall. So with the equipment that you'll need. Um, I'll tell you the particular equipment that I use, but then I will also identify alternatives that may be better than what I'm using or at least passable because you certainly don't have to organize your ecosystem exactly the same way that we did. You can use whatever you have on hand and then as inexpensively as possible, acquire any additional equipment that you need. I'll also talk about the software that you'll need. Again, I'll go specifically into detail about what we use, but I will point out where possible different alternatives that you may have available to you. Then we'll go through some demonstrations. I'll show how we created our graphics and created a consistent branding presentation throughout all the products that we use. And then once you have your graphics done, how to connect the scoreboard data into the graphics using live XML data. And then finally, we'll demonstrate how to take all of that finished product and go live. The good news is that most of this stuff you only have to do once. There is a fair amount of effort involved in the initial setup getting up to speed. You don't have to do all of it uh, the very first time. When we first started doing this, we used basic out-of-the-box graphics and very basic webcasting, uh, and then we have gradually added some more custom elements and custom branding and gotten really slick. So you don't have to go zero to 100% all in one shot. So let's start with the equipment needed. Um, I use a Dactronics All Sport 5000 control console because that's what we have and we use Dactronics equipment at Wakaiva. Uh, if you have the older model, the Dactronics All Sport 3000, that works uh, perfectly fine with the system that I'm going to describe. Just be aware that the All Sport 3000 does not support player stats. Um, other scoreboard vendors will very likely work as well. The brands that I put on here are on Sportscast's website as being known supported brands uh, for one or more sports. Just be aware that depending on what data elements your particular scoreboard vendor supports will determine what data elements you're able to use in your output. And the other thing I'll point out is that even if you have not purchased the equipment that hangs on the wall from your scoreboard vendor, um, you may still be able to use those data elements in your video output. Uh, you don't have to be sending them to the wall to send them to the computer. Then the next piece of equipment you'll need is some form of sportscast device. We use the Score Connect. Um, you'll also see ScoreLink, ScoreBot, and ScoreHub are other products that Sportscast offers. Um, you can read more about the differences between each of these products on their website. Well, what it comes down to is the specific capabilities and how it connects to the internet. Some of the Sportscast equipment supports its own internet connection where it directly connects via Ethernet or Wi-Fi or both. Um, in other cases, it will depend on a USB connection to a computer to get on the internet. Um, in our case, we're using the Score Connect, which does that USB connection because that is our most convenient endpoint to the internet. We're using it in an arena that does not have uh, an Ethernet 
ethernet port readily available to the score table. Um, we could use Wi-Fi, that would be another way we could do it, and that's the way the computer connects, but all these different uh, variety of mechanisms that you can use to build that bridge between your scoreboard controller and the computer. More equipment needed. Um, you will need an HP ZBook. Well, that's what I use. I use an HP ZBook with Intel Core i7 Central Processing Unit, an NVIDIA Quadra K4100M graphics processing unit, 32 gigabytes of memory, a 500 gigabyte primary solid state drive, and a one terabyte hard disk drive. Now that's what I use. Um, reality is a tower computer is probably the most appropriate type of computer to use for this application because then you can get those higher end graphics cards and video capture cards and plug them directly into PCI ports and that's where you'll really get the highest performance at the lowest cost is in a tower unit. In my particular case though, I did not have the budget to go out and build or purchase a computer specifically for this purpose. I need to use a computer that I'm already using for other high-end kinds of graphics capabilities, and this was what I had available. So I'm using a laptop. Um, well, it's hardly a laptop. It doesn't really fit in your lap, but it's a mobile workstation, we'll call it. Reality is any PC that has a strong CPU, GPU, and memory specs and plenty of disk space will suffice here. Um, the disk space is particularly important if you're going to be doing a lot with pre-roll and mid-roll video or if you have a lot of digital assets that you're importing that chew up a lot of hard drive space. Um, but particularly if you are going to use the same device to drive both the video that's going to your live video display in the arena that has that sort of virtual scoreboard and also do live streaming with the same device, that's where that GPU component really becomes important. In fact, in a perfect world, you may even have more than one GPU in the computer because you're driving two different things that need to be graphics processed at the same time, and both of them are very intense. Um, another design setup you might have would be if you are going to do both webcasting and put a live video display out is to use two different computers and only do one of those things on each. In our case though, we don't have the resources, either technology or personnel to do that, so we consolidate everything into a single box and that's what I'll be demonstrating later. If you're a Mac person or if you're a Mac school, well, Macs could be used for this as well. Uh, just be aware that the uh, drivers that you're getting from SportsCast may not be available for Mac, and also vMix is not compatible with Macs. There are other alternatives, though. There are SportsCast products that you can use that don't require those drivers, and likewise, there are other video encoding software products that you can use besides vMix that would be compatible with the Mac. So you can use the same principles, you just won't be able to follow my demonstration quite as precisely. You'll also need some way of getting video from your video recording device into the computer. I use an Avermedia LGP Lite video capture card. The reason I use that is because it's cheap. I spent about $150 on this product um, and you won't find them for much less than that. Most of the ones that are actually targeted at broadcast production um, are targeted at people who have a broadcast production budget and so they typically run north of $200 even for the cheapest ones that are only single input. Uh, there's one that I really like that I don't have called the Innogeny Share 2 that actually has two inputs. Uh, so you can get two different cameras or a camera plus something else into the same card um, over a USB connection. And if you are using a laptop, you're pretty much stuck with a USB connection. Uh, you will not find a USB video capture card that supports more than two inputs at the same time. And the reason for that is because even USB 3.0 cannot handle processing more data into your computer in real time at high definition. Uh, if you tried to put three, it wouldn't work. So that's why you won't find products that offer more than two. That being said, if you really desperately need four inputs, then I suppose you could buy more than one card and connect them to different USB ports. I do not recommend using a USB hub because you're trying to pipe a lot of data through a single cable uh, and it's just not made for that. Now, if you're using a tower, you might be able to use a PCI card, um, and those would be probably preferable. You'll get better performance out of those, and you can get up to four HDMI or four SDI inputs onto a single PCI card. Those are quite a bit more expensive, but that would be really the professional thing to do. Um, another alternative is you may have a camera that connects directly via USB uh, rather than HDMI or SDI. And if that's the case, then good for you. Um, you can plug it directly into the computer. Now, most webcams, like the one that 
I'm recording on right now do that, uh, but webcams don't really have the quality or the zooming or the action shot kind of capability that you're probably looking for for live sports. So you probably would not want to go with that as your primary camera, um, but you could. You can take a webcam, mount it on a tripod, and plug it directly into the computer, and that will work. Um, it just may not be ideal. Now, I use a webcam as a secondary video source that I point at myself and my color commentator so that we can do halftime and post-game kind of analysis, and it also means that my regular camera operator can go ahead and start shutting down without ending the broadcast early. Um, so we actually use both, a traditional camera going through a video capture card and a webcam. Um, another option that gives you a lot of flexibility, but is also very expensive, is to take your professional camera and um, equip it with a Wi-Fi transmitter pack. And then when you have the appropriate hardware and software on your network, you can actually beam your video stream um, over your Wi-Fi network at your school or facility. And then you can receive that data through the network into the computer um, as a network stream. Um, now you have to have a really high performing network in order to do that. And and you need the equipment to do that, but that gives you a lot of flexibility to use professional quality gear without having to run wires everywhere. Um, you also, if you're planning on doing webcasting, will want audio equipment. So you'll want a mixing board, perhaps. You may need an external sound card if the computer does not already have a line in input for you to use. Um, you wouldn't need this if you're only going to be doing video scoreboard app output. Obviously, you don't care about audio in that case. But if you intend to live stream, you would need audio equipment, um, either internal or external to the computer. And then, of course, you would also need potentially microphones. Now, if, you're only, uh, if your only objective is to capture crowd noise, you may be fine just taking the audio that's coming in from the camera without needing a separate microphone. But if you intend to have a play-by-play -play or color analyst um, or any other kinds of direct audio input and you don't want to be taking the audio from the camera, or if your camera is up on the press box with coaches and you don't trust them to uh, keep the language clean on your live stream, you may want to have an alternative of audio source that is not being captured from the same point as the camera. So just think about that as you may need a separate audio input. And then, of course, you'll also need the camera itself. And you can use pretty much anything for this, from the most basic all the way up to uh, professional grade stuff. Um, we use, I would call them semi pro cameras um, that are part of our broadcast production program at Wakaiva. I have um, a Panasonic semi pro camera that I use myself. Um, the catch is that whatever you use, it needs to have a live video out, which is usually HDMI, um, either full size HDMI or mini or micro HDMI. Um, you may need a converter, so we use converter boxes to convert the HDMI to SDI because you can use SDI cable to run long distance because it connects to power and it's amplified. HDMI cables, um, we can reliably get about 25 feet of HDMI cable to work. If you start getting into the 50 foot HDMI cable range, the signal strength is a little squishy um, and it sometimes cuts in and out on us. And anything higher than 50 feet, you pretty much can't find HDMI cables that go more than 50 feet because the signal will degrade to the point that you can't use it. So you may want to look into um, converter boxes that will convert into SDI cable, which you can then run um, an almost unlimited length uh, and still maintain that signal quality if you want to be, uh, if you want to put cameras on the sidelines for football, or if you want to have cameras at the end lines for basketball and volleyball, in addition to the camera that's maybe at the top of the bleachers that you're using as your main camera, SDI cable really gives you a lot more flexibility than HDMI will, but only your really high-end professional grade cameras will support directly an SDI out, and you would need a video capture card specifically that supported a SDI in, or again, you can use a converter if you're using Using the more common HDMI. So once you have all of the equipment gathered, now let's talk about the software that you'll need. Um, I use vMix. Now, vMix is by far not the only solution you could use for this. Wirecast, made by Telestream, um, open broadcasting software, OBS, XSplit, MotionCaster. Um, pretty much you're looking for the same type of software that you would use to live stream. Even if you don't actually intend to live stream and you're only going to be doing a video score table or a video display of live scoreboard data, you're using the same type of software because you have the same demands. It's just whether or not you're also going to send output to the internet. Um, so you're looking for RTMP, that's real-time messaging protocol if you are 
wishing to live stream and all of these examples would include that capability. The reason I chose vMix is because vMix is free. Um, at least for a 60-day trial, you get the full capabilities of vMix available to you. Um, so you can test it out, make sure it works with your hardware and it does what you need it to do. Um, and then even after that trial is over and it reverts into its free form, um, you still get all of the essentials. You can have up to four inputs uh, and an input could be a camera or it could be a lower third title, which would be your scoreboard data can be an audio source, etc. And four is enough to do the most basic capabilities. And they have upgrades available if you'd like to be able to put out in high definition. That's only, I think it's a $60 upgrade to get the high definition version. Um, and then they have some more expensive upgrades that get into the hundreds of dollars if you want things like instant replay and unlimited inputs and 4K uh, and some additional capabilities. Um, they have on vMix's website all of the different levels that you can purchase. But like I said, the entry level product is free and even the high definition product is only about 60 bucks and that you can usually even find promotion codes that make it even less than that. Uh, then you'll need a title designer, so some sort of software to create the titles. Now, vMix comes with some very basic titles out of the box, so this is an optional step. You don't have to design your own branded titles if you don't want to. Um, you can just take the ones that come out of the box. They're very professional looking and they're very basic. Um, Sportscast also offers some products where you can essentially skip the title designer entirely and have the titles already coming in as part of your input. In our case, we wanted more control over the titles, and so we wanted to design them ourselves. And the cool thing about vMix Title Designer is that it is included at no additional cost. It comes with the vMix software. Um, you could also, and vMix has a, a newer product called vMix GT. Um, so if you're making new stuff, that's a newer version of the product that gives it a more Photoshop-like quality where you can manage layers and use some more modern editing tools. Um, there are more powerful titling software titles available like New Blue Titler, um, which is the product that is bundled with Wirecast and you can pay for the better version if you want it. Um, and that's if you really want to do fancy um, titles that have animations and that have things that are triggered when data elements change um, and things like that that fly in and fly out and do all kinds of fancy acrobatics on the screen. Um, you can do that if you want. For our needs though, the vMix title designer that comes out of the box with vMix is adequate for us. Um, if you are going to design your own titles, you will want some sort of graphics editing program like Adobe Photoshop, which is what we use. Now, of course, Adobe licenses are not particularly cheap, although they do get a lot cheaper if you are able to get them at the education price. If you don't have Photoshop and you're not interested in spending the money on it, there is an alternative called GNU Image Manipulation Program, better known as GIMP, that has most of the important capabilities that Photoshop has and is completely free. Um, so you can search for and download that, and that will allow you to build the graphics and create a consistent brand. Another product that we use that you would not have to use is Adobe After Effects. So we purchased a template um, that's called Extreme Sports Pack Pro uh, that has a bunch of graphic elements that give us a very consistent look and feel and branding. And then we used Photoshop to pull out the components of those graphics that we can then use in the live titles. And then we also use After Effects to build our pre-roll and mid-roll videos that we use during breaks and halftime and before the game starts and any other time we don't have live action to show, we can put that on our video score table or onto our webcast um, as something to fill up the space. Uh, and it looks slick and has that consistent branding. And then finally, you'll need uh, the software for Sportscast, which is included with your Sportscast product. The important piece of software here is called Live XML. So that's what receives the data coming through your USB connection and then turns it into either a live text file or a live Excel spreadsheet that gets constantly resaved and re-overwritten that you can then read into vMix or whatever other software you're using to actually create the broadcast. Um, you also may need another piece of software that drives the Score Connect service 
if you are using a sportscast device that connects to your computer by USB, you will need a USB host service that's provided by sportscast. Uh, most of the time it auto detects successfully the brand and the sport code, uh, the, the data that you're sending in, although you can manually select it if it's having a hard time figuring out which one it needs. And if there are any technical glitches where the hardware becomes disconnected or for whatever reason doesn't make a good connection, that you can use the, the GUI of Score Connect to reset the interface, um, boot it up again, and then it usually works just fine from there.